Eliminating tuberculosis in the United States requires dedication, effective management of resources, and hard work. The TB cohort review process is a proven method that can help your TB control program evaluate its progress in the control and elimination of TB. A TB cohort review is a systematic and detailed review of TB cases by all of the staff involved in the care of the patients. Comprehensive case management is essential in TB control and elimination efforts. Cohort review is a component of comprehensive case management. Cohort review brings data from many of the components of case management together and provides a qualitative assessment of the effectiveness of case management activities. Cohort review can be an important means of increasing your completion rate, of tracking your contact index, of seeing how well you're doing with contact elicitation and starting contacts on treatment. So every aspect of a tuberculosis control program can be tracked through this. Basically, it's a management tool. It's a management tool that says we care about what happens to every single patient. The cohort review process can increase staff accountability for patient outcomes, improve TB case management and the identification of contacts, motivate staff, identify program strengths and weaknesses, and identify staff training and education needs. The benefit to cohort review, from my experience, is that you really are changing the knowledge base of those that are practicing TB prevention and control. Individual nurses tell me that they're finally learning TB, or they're finally thinking through the process of TB, because it is the systematic uh, process that has you become accountable you know, for that patient in a true sense. Different TB programs across the country have adopted a variety of approaches to conducting cohort reviews. All of the approaches incorporate the elements of preparation, presentation, and follow-up that you will see in this video. After you have viewed this video, you will be able to define the cohort review approach, describe the benefits of adopting a cohort review process, List the types of data presented on cases at a cohort review. Describe the elements of cohort review related to case preparation, presentation, and follow-up. Let's see how Patrice, a supervisor in a TB control program, explains the cohort review process to Walter, a new TB case management nurse. We will follow Walter as he prepares his cases, presents these cases at a cohort review meeting, and follows up on suggestions made during the session. When we conduct a cohort review, it involves a series of case presentations. The staff member responsible for managing each TB case, such as yourself, presents patient case data to the rest of the TB program staff. Our cohort reviews take place four times a year, in the months of January, April, July, and October. That means that cases identified now will be presented in October. By this time, many patients have completed treatment or are near the end of treatment. This provides us with a clear picture of completion rate of cases in this cohort. It allows us to look at outcomes and to see how our program has performed. During the cohort review, the presenter clearly and concisely presents information on his or her cases and responds to questions from the program manager and other staff. So who attends a cohort review? Well, there's the data analyst who's responsible for having a spreadsheet of all TB cases and their contacts from the cohort, updating any relevant information during the cohort and presenting the final analysis or report card on the cohort at the end. Then there is the TB program manager who calls the cases from the cohort list and along with the medical reviewer listens to all of the case presentations, asks questions about each case and provides feedback and suggestions on how to follow up on the case in their context. The people involved in the case, such as the outreach staff, laboratory staff, and clinic staff, and supervisors, are there to provide feedback and suggestions as needed. The person assigned to the case is ultimately responsible for gathering all the necessary information. Let's learn about the cases that Walter and Gail, a fellow caseworker, are assigned. These cases will be presented at a cohort review session nine months from now. Walter was assigned two new cases. Mr. Parks is a 49-year-old homeless Caucasian man who was identified just two days ago. 
He is now being treated for TB at St. Vincent's Hospital and has agreed to participate in directly observed therapy, or DOT, when discharged. He is HIV infected. He lived under a bridge before entering the hospital. The second case is Mr. Morales, a 32-year-old Mexican-born man in the United States for two years. He lives with his wife, two children, and his brother, and works temporary day jobs in construction. He says he can't be on DOT because of his irregular work schedule. Gail is assigned Mrs. Nguyen, a 43-year-old Vietnamese woman. She is currently being treated by a private provider. She was started on treatment last week. At a case management meeting two weeks later, Walter and Gail update their supervisor on the progress of their cases. Effective and routine case management is an essential element of preparing for a cohort review. So how were the past two weeks? Oh, pretty good, I think. I was able to meet Mr. Parks, the homeless patient, while he was at St. Vincent's Hospital. I've been meeting him at the shelter on weekdays for DOT. After he was no longer infectious, he was discharged, and I arranged housing at a shelter for him. When I interviewed him in the hospital, he was only able to identify two contacts, guys who stayed under the bridge with him. I've been able to identify all the other places other than the bridge where he may have visited. Now, how's the contact investigation going? Well, I started my contact investigation with the two men he identified who stayed under the bridge with him. Successful outcome at a cohort uh, really reflects the uh, ongoing uh, case management of the patient on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, the value of the cohort review process in New York City is the ultimate method of ensuring accountability for each and every patient with tuberculosis. A practice cohort review presentation can sharpen case presentation skills. The practice presentation is more informal than the actual cohort review. If your area chooses to conduct practice presentations, they should be conducted one to two months before the real cohort review session, so that any missing information or needed follow-up can be addressed before the cohort review session. During a practice cohort review presentation, each element of case management is collected on a standardized form and reviewed, with special attention paid to case details, including patient information, TB information, treatment regimen, DOT adherence, and contact investigation. In addition to making sure problems are identified early in the patient's care and follow-up, the goal of the practice cohort review presentation is to help the case presenters to be well prepared for the actual cohort review session. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. And on the phone is the staff from the South Street Clinic. Today we're going to do a practice cohort presentation to get ready for the cohort review. Why don't we start with one of Walter's cases. Mr. Parts is a 49-year-old homeless male born in the U.S. His case was identified January 20th. He's sputum smear positive, culture positive, and pan sensitive. The chest x-ray was positive and non-cavitary. He's also HIV positive. I've been coordinating treatment between the TV team and the HIV physician. He was also put on rifabutin, INH, PZA, and Fambutol on January 21st. He's been on DOT throughout treatment and due to complete treatment at the end of this month. So far we have 15 contacts identified, 7 evaluated, 2 TST positives, 2 started on treatment for latent TB infection, but 1 has lost a follow-up. Okay. What about his culture conversion? Uh, I skipped over that, sorry. Uh, we did cultures monthly until he converted. Why were less than 50% of his contacts tested? Well, prior to his diagnosis, he was living under the 14th Street Bridge. When I interviewed him in the hospital, he only identified two contacts. And later when I re-interviewed him, he identified more. But he can only provide incomplete names and contact information. It's been a real challenge trying to locate the people he has identified. Okay. Listeners on call, you have any questions? Hey, Patrice. This is Sam from South Street. I have a question for Walter. How was uh, the one contact started on treatment lost? Well, that contact has not been seen near the shelter, nor by the staff or other clients. I keep looking for him, but I haven't had any luck. Okay, but we need to keep looking for him. As far as the other eight contacts who were identified and not evaluated, we need to find them as well. Keep checking with Mr. Parks and the shelter staff, and check at other shelters nearby. Oh, and find out what soup kitchens he goes to, where he hangs out, 
panhandles, and does odd jobs. You need to make sure that information that was missing from this presentation is obtained and incorporated into your final presentation. Gail, why don't you As you can see, this practice session was helpful for Walter and the other caseworkers in assisting him in preparing for the actual cohort review. He will need to follow up on these identified areas. This practice session points out some weak areas in the patient's case management, but the corrections should be included in the case presentations for the final cohort review. Knowing that I have to present a cohort, I know that I have to gather my facts together. I have to be able to identify every aspect of this patient treatment. I need to know where they were diagnosed, where they, who they've been around, where they went, who they think may have tuberculosis, where they think they may have caught it from. I need to know every aspect of this case. For this cohort, we the cohort review session starts with the TB program manager or other TB staff member summarizing the demographic information for the current cohort. Here's the age breakdown for the quarter. For less than five, there are two cases. Ages then the TB program manager will conduct a case-by-case -case review of the patient outcomes, with the details to be presented by each patient's case manager. The case presentations and discussion will take up the majority of the session. Let's move to the first case, Mr. BP. We have a 49-year-old homeless male born in the U.S. The case was identified January 20th. To set up a cohort review process, the concept is really very simple. You start with a list of patients. You start at the top, you go to the end, and then you stop. And so what you need first is enough time, because it can take a lot of time. Second, you really need to listen need to listen to what the staff are saying, to what problems they're having, and you need for staff to be listening to patients for those same things. What are the problems? How can they be overcome? It's identified 10 were evaluated, two were TST positive with no disease. One is likely to complete treatment for a latent TB infection next month, but one was lost to follow up. Why were there five contacts not evaluated? Well, the patient lived under a bridge for six One months. of the challenges to this are going to be that when you actually start looking at every patient at that level of detail, you're going to find that many things that you should have done were not being done. And it's really, um, you're going to be shocked probably, you know, if you're the program director. Did the client stay at any other shelter during his infectious period prior to his hospitalization? Well, the purpose of cohort is not just to present the case, it's discussion. The during discussion, we are free to ask any question to doctors, to director of the bureau, and we like the atmosphere in the cohort because our doctors is help us to keep in the focus whatever we need to see and whatever we have to discuss. Next case, TN. 43-year-old. Vietnamese female in the U.S. for three years, case identified January 18, 2000. To have that time commitment of having direct care staff sitting with medical staff, which we don't do in our hurried and busy lives, that's where real learning and education and a, a real team and, and, and almost a bonding in this work occurs. And it, and it wouldn't occur in any other process if we didn't stop and do this cohort process and review. Continuation of treatment and I see the cohort as actually an educational experience for me. I learn what is it that staff are doing. Uh, you know, it really tells me how, what are the issues that were there for every patient and uh, what are the barriers that staff faced and really all the things that they accomplished. To cooperate with the health department at the beginning of the treatment for the patient, we had a medical consultation with the provider because he had the client on the wrong dosage of medication. We also had a difficult time getting the cultures done. We worked hard and made a special efforts to reach out and explain everything to the doctor. He finally came around and allowed us to provide the continuation of treatment under DOT. We've had some issues with some private providers prescribing inappropriate regimens and dosages. Sometimes working with the private providers can be challenging. Let's put this on the agenda and talk about it at our next staff meeting. Good idea. Let's move on to the next case, JM. We have a 32-year-old Mexican-born male day laborer 
The case was identified January... The cohort process is a team building process. It says we're in this together to get patients cured. We're going to ensure that you're doing what you need to do, but we're also going to ensure that you have the tools you need to do it. Cohort reviews aren't fancy. Doesn't take a lot of money, doesn't take high tech, it just takes knowledge of the patients and systematic tracking of how each one is doing. Initially, he refused clinic DOT due to his work schedule, and he wouldn't agree to have someone... It is possible money. for any size program to implement cohort review and to be successful with it. And they don't even have to he be in person. You can actually participate over a conference call and engage within a conference call with a greater team providing you feedback. We checked the post office for a forwarding address and the phone company for a new number, but we weren't able to find him. Then two weeks later, he was admitted to the hospital again with a cough, fever, and night sweats. And at this time, he was smear positive and culture positive, still pan sensitive. The patient admitted to stopping meds, and his treatment was extended. He agreed to DOT on his lunch breaks at the work site, so the culture conversion is eight weeks after the second hospitalization. He's scheduled to complete treatment next month. What happened with the DOT in this case? This got so much more complicated because we were unable to get him on DOT from the start. Well, initially, he said that he couldn't make it to the clinic because he leaves for work at 6 a.m. and doesn't get home until 8 or 9 p.m. He works as a construction day laborer, so we've pushed to find a prearranged spot to meet him either at home or near the work site for field DOT, but he wouldn't agree with it. However, his second hospitalization scared him into being on DOT. I also offered him an incentive of meal tickets when he met me for his meds. Also, as time went on, he began to feel more comfortable and trusting at the fact that I was actually helping him. What about the contacts? Well, his infectious period was extended because of the interruption in treatment. 16 contacts were identified, 4 refused, 12 were evaluated, 8 were TST negative, 4 were TST positive, and two of the positive were his wife and brother. Both are in treatment for latent TB infection. Now the other two positives are his children ages five and seven. They had negative chest x-rays and they're on treatment for latent TB infection. All four of the people living in the patient's household were evaluated. Were the kids on directly observed therapy for latent TB infection? Yes, they were. Good. Have all the negative contacts been retested that were in contact with the patient after he became infectious the second time? Yes, all were retested and all were negative. Well, since four of his close contacts were TST positive, follow up on those four contacts that initially refused testing is a high priority, okay? After all the cases have been presented, the data analyst, or the person collecting the data, will calculate and present the outcomes for the cohort. He or she will also summarize treatment outcomes for contacts of cases treated in the previous six months.